Hi friends! Happy Valentine's Day and happy birthday to my friend Jen who is one of my $20 patrons. So this is a special video for her but I hope something that all of you also enjoy. I don't have any Valentine's jammies so I'm wearing my Christmas jammies. One thing I know Jen loves are reviews of beauty products and I have a few things that I was given for Christmas that I still haven't used. So here we go. My fuzzy socks are still in here. Oh, it has something from Mary Kay sticking out of it. What is this? Ooh! Mint Bliss Energizing Lotion for Feet and Legs. I'll definitely use that. Sorry Mary Kay, but I don't like to put your stuff on my face because I break out in a rash or something. But I'll use this. It's probably fine. Not gonna show my feet though. I don't do that. I was given this exfoliator and it looks kind of interesting and I've been feeling a need to exfoliate my face. Charcoal, oh body exfoliator, uh oh, maybe I shouldn't use it on my face. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. It says to use your favorite cleanser with it. I don't really have a favorite cleanser but I bought this liquid Neutrogena because it was the only thing at Fred Meyer that wasn't locked up. Wow. You must feel really good about yourselves, Neutrogena. No one wants to steal your face wash. If we, eh, I've been going to exercise class at my church every day for over a month. Well, it's every weekday. Monday through Friday. There's been a couple times that it was canceled because of weather, but I still work out on my own. All right, this has a thing to hang it up. I don't think I have a thing to hang it on in the shower, but that's fine. I'm sitting on an exercise ball, so um, if I fall down, that's why. My husband got this ball for physical therapy, and it's come in quite handy for me. <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to rub this thing on my face, <laughs> but I do have to wash my face before I use the next thing. I'm making a big mess here. Okay, so at exercise class today, it was um, a combo of High Fit and Zumba. And we did a Valentine's edition of it, and they gave us this. They also gave me these glasses, but I can't really wear them and wash my face at the same time. I'm rubbing very lightly, but it feels like it's meant to be for the body, just like it says. Let me know what your favorite beauty products are in the comments. I also wanted to tell you that I auditioned for something. Um, it's an oratorio, so not exactly like a, a musical, but I actually got a part. I've done solos and stuff like for decades, but this is my first time having an actual part in anything. So I've never been in a musical or opera or anything like that. I've done recitals, um, but yeah, by the time we perform, I will be 49 years old. So my first role at 49 and I'm just, I'm so surprised that I got a part because usually we have auditions just for people within our choir, but they opened it up for everyone. And so there were people who have more experience than I do, people who have degrees, and we actually had to send a headshot and our resume and everything. And I just had to be really honest and tell them, you know, I never got my degree. I, um, I got really sick and I had to quit college and never came back because uh, it took years for me to be diagnosed correctly. Um, but I included that I never stopped singing. I never stopped playing the piano. I still continued to perform whenever I could. And I was a Messiah soloist a couple times, and I was also a soloist for 
Mozart's Requiem years ago. So um, I also included that my only acting experience <laughs> is pretending to be an actor on uh, my YouTube channel. <laughs> so I woke up the other morning and I saw that an email came through and I had, was just waking up. So I, I opened it fully prepared to read my rejection email and was so shocked to see that I got a part and it's a small part. So I think that's perfect, but it will, you know, get my feet wet. It will give me another thing to put on my resume and I'm just so excited about it. And I'm going to be practicing obsessively. <laughs> I'm also kind of the understudy for one of the bigger roles, and so I have a lot of music to learn just in case I'm needed. I just remembered that there was a time that Jen asked me to talk about how I got into music. So I'll do that right now. First of all, I can't really put all of these things on my face, but we have a peel off charcoal mask. I don't know if it's going to be the type that causes pain or not. So this one might be the most entertaining for you. Um, this is a mud mask that has peppermint oil and stuff in it. So suitable for all skin types. I suspect it would probably make me break out. Exfoliate and soothe. Two-step facial treatment. One AHA plus BHA. I don't know what that means. It's an enzyme peel. Oh, that sounds promising. Second step, vitamin B3 serum. I feel like I could use a serum. Helps gently remove dead skin cells, revealing a glowing, radiant complexion. Oh, I want to look radiant. And this one is repair and illuminate. Two-step facial treatment, amino acid, cream mask, and then what, what the heck? <laughs> Baku, Baku Chio Serum. How do you pronounce that? Oh, I'm going to leave this on for 20 minutes. This is a long process. I don't know about that. I do talk a long time. It's probably fine. All right, I'm going to go the exfoliate route to clean dry skin. Oh, wait, that's the wrong side. <sighs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Some lotion-y stuff just exploded. All right. I'm gonna leave this on for 20 minutes or until it starts to burn or something. Hopefully it won't. Enzyme peel. I have piano students coming over later and hopefully I don't look like a freak. Okay, so my whole family is musical. My parents um, they both play the guitar. My mom didn't play guitar as much as my dad, but pretty much everyone in my family sings. When I was about four, either four or five, um, you know, I was downstairs playing one day and it just occurred to me to ask my parents if I could have piano lessons. So I went upstairs and I asked them and they looked at each other and they said, okay. And that just amazes me because if our kids asked for something like that, we'd have to talk about it. We'd have to figure out if it's in the budget and everything. So I'm very grateful that my parents were in the situation at the time that they could make that decision without, um, having to think really hard about it. And being so young, it really touches me 
to look back at this and realize that they had faith in me that I was actually going to follow through. Being a piano teacher now, I realize how rare it is for a child to always practice. And I'm very lucky to have a couple students <laughs> who do. Um, but yeah, I, I always showed up prepared every single week. Uh, and my parents would actually have to tell me to step away from the piano because I was getting frustrated. So my piano teacher would leave and then I would stay at the piano until I got it right. I started with the older teacher who, he must have been pretty dang old, like I think he was approaching 80. <laughs> and he decided he didn't have the patience for little kids anymore. So he passed me to a son and I was with him until seventh grade and I never felt like he really liked me. But I thought, okay, would I rather have the nice neighborhood piano teacher who isn't as accomplished, or did I want the concert pianist? And I decided I wanted the concert pianist to teach me. I do look back and see that there were some holes in what I was taught because I think if I wasn't ready to learn something, he just kind of didn't come back to it. So I think he resented that he had to teach piano lessons to pay the bills. Um, I know that he composed music and that was his passion. Uh, I, c I can actually go to YouTube and find a few of his compositions. Um, but he did teach me a lot and seventh grade I was just kind of done with him and my mom said the tension was just getting worse. I switched to a different piano teacher for a while and I just decided I'm done. <laughs> and I continued to learn on my own. I actually became a much better sight reader on my own. So I think you know teaching piano was kind of boring for him so he would demonstrate the songs which made it so that I didn't have to work as hard to figure out the rhythm. I still had to figure out where the notes were. But yeah, looking back at that, like I totally understand too. It's, it's hard to teach kids and sit there and wait for them to figure it out and not give them the easy way out by just going, okay, this is how the song goes. <laughs> There's also that impatience where you just want them to be able to start playing music as soon as possible, but you also want them to be able to sit down in front of some music and actually know what to do on their own. It was around that time where I started singing and playing the piano at the same time, and I was drawn more to music where I could sing along. I didn't want instrumental piano music. I would go to a sheet music store and they said, okay, so you don't really want piano music exactly. <laughs> it all ended up being piano music with vocals. But when I moved to a different school, I didn't want the choir teacher to know that I played the piano because I thought I'll get roped into playing because that's what happened in grade school. So my music teacher never realized that that I could sing. Um, she just wanted me to, to play the piano for everything. Um, that's the other funny thing is I accompanied for things, but I never played a piano recital because when my teacher first suggested it, I was very young and I freaked out and I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And I thought we were going to be on stage or something. And so he just said, oh, okay. And he just like never came back to it. He didn't try to reassure me that everybody was in the same boat. And that's really kind of lame. <laughs> so here I am teaching piano and I've never done a piano recital. I've accompanied so many times. Like I've been paid to accompany people. I just still, I don't like to play piano solos and have the spotlight on me. And I don't know, there's something about 
playing the piano and feeling everyone staring at you and you can't look back at them. This doesn't make any sense, but for some reason I'm way more comfortable singing in front of people. I can look at them, I can find a friendly face in the audience, and I don't know, I just enjoy singing a lot more, and playing the piano has been just a huge blessing to me because it really helps me learn my music quickly, and I can practice and practice like crazy because I can play for myself. And I'll show you part of my audition that I did. Um, I actually recorded the accompaniment. Touch my eyes and bid them see that my gift I actually got really mad at my mom because she ended up telling my new choir teacher that I played the piano in, in secret. And then the choir teacher lied to me and said, hey, I ran into your old piano teacher and he tells me you play the piano. I'm like, yeah, all right, my mom told you. But my mom didn't understand the reason why. It was because I wanted to sing. And then we ended up moving back to my old district. I started choir again with a new teacher and we had an assignment where we had to sing a duet with someone and I didn't know what voice part I even was back then so I sang alto and she had had my brother who's six years older than me and he's an amazing singer and he actually was a vocal performance major initially and then he changed his major a few times so she said, you can tell that you're his sister. <laughs> and part of me like didn't want to hear that because I didn't want to be called his sister all the time, but it was actually a big compliment. So um, I wasn't even really nervous doing it because I was singing it with a friend. But um, yeah, that got me started. And then there was a a workshop where on a Saturday where a voice teacher came and worked with those of us who were interested and um, like this made such a huge difference in my life like she said you look so beautiful when you sing I don't think she knew how much that would affect me but that was seventh grade I still look back at that and that was so wonderful because I had an English teacher in seventh grade and I told her how interested I was in being a writer someday and she gave me no support whatsoever. She was just, she was not a nice lady and I think if she had said, you are a really good writer, I've noticed that, that would have encouraged me but her lack of encouragement made me think, oh, I must not be good at it because she's not being supportive and um, years and years later <laughs> people have told me that I am a good writer. I have many things that I'm interested in. So I continued to sing in choir. I started taking voice lessons when I was about 16. I started, well before that I started doing the solo and ensemble competitions and that's when you sing in front of a judge and they might work with you a little bit and then they give you a score. That is very intimidating. Rather than just singing because you just want to make people feel good, you're being nitpicked. <laughs> and my first one, I sang right after a girl 
who was tone deaf and I watched the judge kind of, he ripped her to shreds, but you know, in sort of a nice way. But yeah, I was absolutely terrified because I was singing a German song and I didn't know German, but my, my teacher taught the song to me and my brother helped me with some of the German too. And I think the judge was, was tired. <laughs> he, he just said something like, oh, that was, that was very nice. Like I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> American Idol didn't exist back then, but you know, I thought he was going to be like what we know now would be Simon Cowell. So I continued to do choir, did voice lessons, and the first year of high school there was a musical, but I was told that sophomore girls almost never got into the musicals because they gave preference to seniors. So I did audition. I don't think my audition was that great. Um, I didn't get a part. And then the next year our school did Grease and I read the script and I thought, I don't want to do this in front of my family. Like in the stage version, they're swearing and then Sandra D flips everyone off at the end. And I just said, no, nah, I don't want to be a part of that. And then my senior year, I was focusing so hard on my grades. I thought I just, you know, don't have the time to do this. But then I got roped into playing the piano for it. And I thought I just should have auditioned. And I took a drama class at one point, And one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't just take more drama. So I wanted to get into BYU really bad, but in the end, I didn't. And I wished I had just gone with the classes that were more fitting to my personality. But I had gone to this meeting that talked to us about how to get into BYU and they want to see you taking more math classes than you have to. And they want to see you taking more science classes too. So. I could have just stopped taking math and I could have taken more drama and that would have been really beneficial to me and the goals I had in my life. And so kind of frustrating because for BYU, they don't do the SAT. They want you to take the ACT and I didn't do very well, but the ACT doesn't show you're really great at music. You're really great at German, <laughs> you know, anything like that. I didn't do well. Um, I think a big part of that was because I was having health problems and I got migraines both times I took the test. So it just made it impossible to concentrate. Um, so if you want to get into BYU though, be a music major, you know, your grades have to be good enough. Your ACT has to be good enough. And I applied to BYU twice, did not get in. It was very frustrating, but that ended up being okay because I went to community college and that is when I got really sick and I couldn't stop throwing up for three months. That's a whole long story. But um, I, I kept going to college. I, I'd race there, run to the bathroom, throw up, go to class, leave class, throw up. This would go on like until the afternoon and it was a total nightmare. Um, they thought like after doing a lot of tests, they couldn't figure out what it was. So they thought maybe my gallbladder was diseased. And two weeks before they removed it, I stopped throwing up finally. And I said, Oh, cool. Can I just not have it out now? And the surgeon said, Well, I still think you had a really bad attack. I think it needs to come out. So I was 19 years old, 109 pounds. And they did a biopsy, but it showed my gallbladder was healthy. I still wasn't feeling wonderful. Um, I had that surgery during winter break. It was actually like New Year's Eve. And when I went back to school, I thought, okay, I pushed through. I'm going to be okay now. But then I started throwing up again briefly. 
and then I started having heart palpitations and I had like a total panic attack um, in the foyer and I just realized like this long illness has taken a major toll on me and so I just decided I have to be done and I continued to have issues for years and then I, I wasn't diagnosed until I was married with um, lymphocytic colitis and they said oh well there's not really much treatment for it when I went to college I had to pay for it and I was denied financial aid because of what my dad made the year before but my dad was unemployed at the time so they didn't take into account that he doesn't have a job right now and so I was like I don't have money to waste on going to college and getting sick again and having to drop out of my classes and my husband was in the Air Force and every time I saw there was an audition for something it said must submit a headshot and it's very expensive to get professional headshots and it's lame like that's what held me back all those years but I'm like I can't say hey I need hundreds of dollars for a headshot when we didn't even have like our basic needs met like that would just feel totally selfish so I did join a choir though it wasn't anything major it's just a community choir and I had some opportunities to solo there and then um, I ended up taking a, a very long choir break but I did do like church choir and I sing solos in church and stuff and sometimes sing at weddings but um, I wasn't in another really great choir until um, 2013 when a new one formed with a symphony and it has just been such a huge blessing in my life like <laughs> It, going to rehearsal is like my therapy. It just always makes me feel better. Um, my choir is like my second family for me. I absolutely love it. I love the people there so much. And I love choral singing. So there are some opportunities to sing solos. Not like a ton, but I had auditioned for every single solo almost that fits my voice for like 10 years. So I went through two different conductors and didn't get a solo except for one time when we sang at a church and I didn't really audition for it, but it was like our, our COVID concert. Um, and he just said, hey, can you sing that for us? And I said, okay. And I went home and told my son, I think I got a solo. <laughs> Not really sure. Um, but yeah, as far as like everything I ever auditioned for, I never got a solo. And I just kind of developed a complex <laughs> over it. <laughs> like, what am I doing wrong? And my friends were like, you sounded amazing on that. I don't understand why he's not giving you a solo. I'm like, I don't know. So um, then we have a new director and our first season with him, um, he's given me several solos now and <laughs> it just feels so great. And I have all these friends who tell me, I feel vindicated for you. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't think I would actually get a part in this oratorio that we're doing and I just I love it so much it's all about the last days of Jesus's life I went to two performances of it last year during a very hard time and I had never heard it before and I just bawled my head off and then I made my family go with me the next week it was um, performed on Easter too and I am very excited for people to come and hear it for the first time and I hope they will have the same powerful experience that I had. Okay, I have to wash this off. Alright, here's the serum. Just
clear stuff. Just feels to rub it in and let it do whatever it does. I wonder how much women usually spend on products that actually do nothing. Now, in case you all didn't know, my oldest son is a vocal performance major. People have kind of raised eyebrows at that and asked, okay, well, how is he going to make money? And I just told them, I totally believe in him that he is going to make money with his voice. It's actually, men have a much better chance because there are fewer doing vocal performance than women. But uh, Christmas Eve, he got paid $350 for um, two church services. So that's pretty great. But um, yeah, I could see him getting into operas and stuff, which apparently pay pretty decent, but they're a ton of, ton of work. And um, he's done a little opera at school. Seems to really like it. He also does jazz. He's in their chamber choir. And turns out he's actually good at composing too. So he uh, put up a video of himself singing a song and he goes, do you know who, comp who composed that? I'm like, no. And he said, it was me. <laughs> I was very impressed. So um, that is what he's passionate about. He has, I'll share a little bit of him too. Um, he was constantly singing <laughs> as a child, <laughs> whether it was just humming the Star Wars theme or <laughs> other songs from his favorite movies. But yeah, he would practice past midnight when he was in high school and stuff. <laughs> it's just what he thrives on and he's way too talented. Um, for me not to support him in this major. So he's in his second year now. He's going to still have to do another year. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to do. Okay, I think I've rubbed this stuff in enough. I'm going to put this minty lotion on my legs. And I think it's going to feel really good because I've been working out. It's tingly minty lotion. Also, um, the face mask, I don't think it made me break out or anything. I have been very busy practicing and I've been working my butt off to get in shape and it's really cool to see how it hasn't really taken that long for me to feel big improvements. So I started I think on January 4th and yeah it was really hard at first and it's just it's so hard to start again and I know at some point I'll have some sort of setback where I get sick or something and it's going to be really hard to get back into it, but um, the women at these classes are so supportive and I've made friends with some of them, so I know that if I 
didn't show up, I'm going to have them, you know, give me a call or a text asking if I'm okay and if I'm coming back. And I just realized after a while, I just really needed to take advantage of these classes because as many times as I've told myself, oh yeah, I'm going to work out at home, it just usually doesn't happen because I think, okay, well, first I need to do the dishes and I need to pay the bills and I need to do this and I need to do that. And then it's evening and then, well, I'm just way too tired. So it's great that I'm starting my day with exercise. Well, actually I, I drop off Sabrina and then I might get a load of dishes done and then I go to class and I'm finding that I just have a lot more energy to do the other things that I feel like I need to get done. So if you are struggling to get healthy, um, just find some sort of activity that, that you enjoy and, you know, just do it. So I just, I love that my body feels stronger. My range of motion is better. I'm feeling less clumsy, less like I might fall or something. And it just makes me feel like I'm in a better mood too. It makes me feel like I accomplish something every day. Not too long after I started doing these classes, I went to a friend's house and I was able to organize and clean her place for four hours. Like I was like working the entire time and it was so cool to see the benefits already. Here's another thing I have from Mary Kay. Masking minis, time-wise. A moisture renewing gel mask. Oh, and a deep cleaning charcoal mask. There we go with the charcoal again. I've never tried this by Mary Kay. This one, you rinse off. It's not one of those things you've seen where people are in agony trying to peel it off of their face. I think the serum is mostly soaked into my face now. Do I look radiant? Oh wait, no. This isn't radiant. It's exfoliate and soothe. Do I look like I've been soothed? I have one more thing I'm doing today after I teach piano. I can't believe I forgot to tell you the hilarious Mary Kay story. So when I was working at a shoe store when I was in college and I had just gotten over my illness for the most part, this lady came in and asked if I wanted a makeover. And since I felt like crap, I thought, yeah, I would like a makeover. So she said, okay, I'll pick you up. And so, yeah, she brought me to like a business suite and I put Mary Kay makeup on my own face, which isn't really my idea of a makeover. <laughs> and then most of it was a pitch about how you become a representative and the pink Cadillac you can earn, um, all that stuff. So on the way there, she asked me what my dreams were. And I said to be a singer and on the way home, she said, I was just wondering, have you ever thought about giving up your dream of singing to sell Mary Kay? <laughs> I'm not kidding you. She really said that to me. And I said, no, I haven't. <laughs> and also, I think my face probably had a rash at that very moment. So I probably would not make a very good Mary Kay salesperson. This minty lotion does feel good though. I just put on my fuzzy socks to lock in the moisture and the mintiness. Happy birthday, Jen. I hope you had a wonderful day. I wish you could have gone to this activity with me. We learned how to make crepes and of course eat crepes and it was all kind of funny and chaotic because we kept blowing the breakers with all of these electric griddles. And I wanted to light a candle for you, but we're not allowed to do that in the church. 